Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Faraz Jamil. I'm a second year medical student at the University of Cambridge. This video is the first of a three part series where I'm going to be going through the BMAT 2021 section two paper in a full walkthrough. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any videos and make sure you tell all your friends about it if they're also sitting in the BMAT. As far as I can find on YouTube, there's no walkthroughs of the 2021 paper. And I think this is going to help a lot of people. So without further ado, here's part one of the three-part video series. All right, so welcome to the paper. As we can see, it's the 2021 section two paper and you have 30 minutes. 27 questions in 30 minutes means that timing is a real challenge in this paper. And that's even written on the front. Work quickly or you might not finish the paper. And, but no extra paper is allowed. That's also important. So you're not given extra paper for section two and no calculators as well. So that's why speed is everything in the BMAT, especially with section two. Now, so question one, a person with cardiovascular disease is at risk of a heart attack. A blood clot may form in one of the arteries that supplies blood to the heart muscle. If the blood clot blocks the artery, blood will be unable to reach some of the cells in the heart. These cells will die due to a lack of oxygen. Scientists aim to develop a treatment that uses stem cells to replace the cells damaged during the heart attack. Which of the following statements about cardiovascular disease and possible stem cell treatment after a heart attack is correct? So statement one, cardiovascular disease is a communicable disease that is caused by interaction of many factors. That's incorrect. You cannot spread cardiovascular disease between people. You can't catch a heart attack from someone. That's simply incorrect. Statement two, embryonic stem cells could be used for this treatment because they can differentiate into muscle cells in the heart. That is true since embryonic stem cells still have the capacity to differentiate into a wide array of different cell types. So that's true. Statement three, the treatment to replace damaged cells in the heart with stem cells could increase the risk of cancer developing. So that's true because one of the risks of tr stem cell transplant therapies is that they can cause cancer. So therefore statements two and three are correct and the correct answer must therefore be G. Okay, now question two. Element Z forms a stable ion Z3- which has the following electron configuration of 288. To which group and period of the periodic table does Z belong? So, if when it's the Z3- ion it has an electron configuration of 288, that means that this is Z when it has an excess of 3 electrons. So its normal configuration would be 285. Therefore, it would be in group 15. And since it has three electron shells, it would be in period three. And the correct answer is D. Okay. Now question two. An object of mass five kilograms falls vertically through still air. The air resistance acting on the object has a constant value of 50 newtons. Which one of the following statements about the object is slash are correct? And G is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram. So we know that W is equal to mg. Therefore, W is equal to five times 10 which is equal to 50 newtons, which is equal to the air resistance. So therefore, the acceleration is going to be zero as F is equal to zero and F is equal to MA, A is equal to F over M. So these are just the basic equations you should know from GCSE. So the acceleration on, of the object is 10 meters per second squared. That's incorrect since there's no um, net force acting on the object. There's no resultant force on the object, we know that's true. And the object is traveling at terminal velocity. If this is true, statement two is true, statement three must also be true. Therefore, options two and three are correct. And therefore the correct answer is going to be G, which is where only statements two and three are correct. Okay, now question four. Express the following in its simplest form. So, first of all, we're going to expand the brackets. So you multiply up the powers by what's outside the bracket. So you get x to the 6 and y to the 8 on the bottom. Now, if you multiply 3x by x to the 6, you're going to get 3x to the 7 on the top. And if you multiply y by 1 over y to the 8, that's going to be y divided by y to the 8, which is going to be y to the minus 7, which is 1 over y to the 7. So therefore, it's going to be 3x to the 7 over y to the power of 7. And that is answer option E, which is the correct answer. So just to recap what I've done there, I've expanded the bracket and then I've just simplified it, multiplying up by top and bottom. So 3x and times by y. 
So that's going to be 1 to the 7, and that's going to be 3x to the 7, that's answer option E. So relatively simple. Now, question 5. The browning of fruit involves enzymes. The time taken for slices of apple kept in different solutions to turn brown is shown in the table. The effect of pH and sodium chloride concentration were investigated. All other variables were kept constant. Okay. A student used the data to make the following statements about these enzyme catalyzed reactions. Which one of the statements are correct? So, question five. The enzymes involved in browning are denatured in weakly alkaline conditions. So let's look at the data. That would be untrue because when you have a weakly alkaline condition, a pH of nine, that time for the apple to brown is still is the lowest. So that would mean it's untrue. It can't be denatured. So statement one is definitely correct. Oh, sorry, incorrect. So we can get rid of statement one. Now, the optimum pH for the enzymes is pH 7.0. That's not true since you get equal performance, i.e. an equally short time to brown when you have a pH of 9. So the optimum pH is not 7, so that statement is also incorrect. Enzymes are activated by sodium chloride. That's also going to be incorrect since the enzymes are definitely active in these four cases, or at least these three ones and you have zero moles per decimeter cubed of sodium chloride so therefore all three statements are incorrect and the correct answer is going to be a now question six the industrial manufacture of ethanol from ethene is a catalyzed reversible reaction the equation for the reaction is as follows which one of, which one of the following conditions when made independently would increase the number of moles of ethanol present at equilibrium i.e. which one of these changes is going to shift it to the right. So, if you increase the pressure, that's going to shift the equilibrium towards the right. The reason being, you have two moles of gas on the left and one mole of gas on the right. So, if you increase the pressure, the equilibrium is going to shift in order to try and reduce the pressure. Remember the principle. The equilibrium shifts to try and resist the change that you have created. So, therefore, Statement one is correct. It's going to shift it right. Statement two, increasing the temperature. This reaction has a negative enthalpy, so it releases heat. So statement two would not shift it to the right because the reaction would want to shift in order to decrease the temperature again, i.e. it would shift left. Statement two is incorrect. Addition of more catalyst does not affect the position of the equilibrium, so therefore that's incorrect. Only statement one is correct, and the correct answer is therefore B. If you guys are looking for an online BMAT course that teaches you what you need to know, the exam technique you need to use, and goes over more than 30 worked examples in 60 plus videos, go to sigmamed.co.uk. It's an online BMAT video course that students can replay at any time and wherever they please, created by me and my friend Hamza, both going to the University of Cambridge and studying medicine there. It costs only £25, and honestly, I would really recommend it to anyone sitting in the BMAT next month. It will really help you prepare for the BMAT and make preparation that much more seamless. So go check out sigmamed.co.uk to get more details on the course and we hope you consider buying it. Without further ado, here's part two of this video. Okay, so question seven. A radiation detector on a background lab bench is switched on when there are no radioactive samples in the lab. The count rate displayed by the detector is 24 counts per minute, so that's the background. A radioactive sample is now placed next to the detector and the count rate displayed is 248. So 248 minus 24 is equal to 224. So that's the radiation that the sample causes, that the sample is responsible for. The sample is left next out to the detector for 48 hours, after which time the count rate displayed is 31 counts per minute. What is the half-life of the sample? So if it's 31, that means that the sample is responsible for seven. So we want to find how many half-lives exist between 224 and seven counts per minute, which come from the sample. So 224 divided by two is 112. 112 divided by two is 56. 56 divided by two is 28. 28 divided by two is 14. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five half-lives. Five HL in 48 hours. Therefore, HL is going to be 48 over 5, which is equal to 9 plus a bit. 
So let's look for the answer option that's a bit more than nine. That's going to be D, which is 9.6 hours. So that's how you do this type of question. Now, what is the mean of root 12, root 27, and root 147? So first we want to find the sum of them. So what we do is we express it as a product of a square number and the product of three. Because all of these numbers, when you divide them by three, they give you a square number. And that's one thing with BMAT section two. You have to look for shortcuts, ways to make problems easier. So we're going to make this root four times three plus root nine times three plus root 49 times 3, which is equal to 2 root 3 plus 3 root 3 plus 7 root 3, which is equal to 12 root 3. Now, if you have the, the mean is the total divided by 3. So let's say m is the mean. That's going to be 12 root 3 divided by 3, which is equal to 4 root 3. And now we're going to express 4 as the root square root of something. So that's going to be the square root of 16 the square root of 3, which is going to be the square root of 48. And that's going to be answer option B. So as you can see, what we did there is we simplified the square roots by expressing them as the, the product of 3 and a square number. Therefore, you can square root the square number to simplify it into this form. We then found the total, divided it by 3 because we're looking for a mean. We then expressed 4 as the square root of something, so going backwards now. And that gives us this. And then we know that 16 times 2 is simply 48. So that's how we do this type of question. Now, question 9. A mature active cell in a healthy human has the following features. Cell membrane, no DNA, and molecules that bind with oxygen. That instantly tells you that's going to be an R, B, C that you should just know from GCSE and also you learn this at A-level biology. Which one of them following statements about the cell are correct. It is transported by a solution. So, are red blood cells transported in solution? Yes, they're transported in the blood, so that's going to be correct. It releases oxygen into active tissues. We know that's correct because, well, that's what red blood cells do. They deliver oxygen to metabolize in tissues. It releases energy from its own mitochondria. So, is that correct? So that is, of course, not correct because red blood cells do not have mitochondria. So we know that only statements one and two are correct. Therefore, the correct answer option is E. So that's the first nine questions of this paper. In the next two videos, we're going to be going over the second nine and the third nine questions. Thank you for watching.